The reality is that due to our lack of common ground, every flaw and injury in our society now appears to be more than just a minor issue on an otherwise healthy foundation. Instead, they are seen as symptoms of an underlying conflict that has the potential to be fatal. For instance, when a mentally ill individual commits a heinous act of murder, it should be a unifying experience for all Americans to mourn and share the grief. This should be an event that unites us against the presence of evil and condemns those who commit such atrocities. However, the current situation is quite different. Every time a mass shooting occurs, our initial response is to determine the political implications of the incident before deciding how we feel about it. According to the media standards, if a mass shooting happens in downtown Chicago's South Side, which unfortunately occurs almost every weekend, it often goes unnoticed and unreported. This is because the media considers it unremarkable and irrelevant, especially if the victims are predominantly black. By ignoring these incidents, the media attempts to avoid perpetuating negative racial stereotypes in the United States. On the other hand, if a shooting takes place in a predominantly white area like Highland Park in Chicago, the news media will extensively cover it. This selective coverage is seen as evidence of a grave American problem, gun violence. Unfortunately, we are unable to engage in meaningful discussions about the issues affecting different areas of Chicago. Each wound inflicted on our body politic immediately becomes a catalyst for polarization. This example from Chicago perfectly illustrates this phenomenon. On this show, however, we believe in prioritizing unity over divisive matters, such as recognizing that evil people are evil and should not be glorified. Consequently, we refrain from mentioning the names of mass shooters, unlike other major media outlets that not only mention their names but also provide detailed accounts of their motives and manifestos. This focus on the perpetrators only fuels a vicious cycle where potential future shooters seek fame. Inspired by the attention given to previous attackers, the media should take a moment to reflect on their role in this pattern. I only report the essential details for you to understand the story. I believe that the names of these mass shooters are unnecessary as I don't want them to gain fame. Instead, I want them to remain unknown and suffer in hell where they belong. In general, if someone behaves like an insane person in society, it's safe to assume they are insane. Now, in this specific case, the individual responsible for the terrible mass shooting in Highland Park killed six people and injured 38 others. Clearly, this person is mentally unstable. Though it may not be politically correct to say so, the evidence is apparent. The person posted disturbing content on social media, demonstrating their instability. For instance, we have a highly unsettling video of this person simulating a mass shooting in a school. It is evident that this person is insane. I cannot find a better term to describe them. I am unaware of the specific mental illness they may suffer from. But it is clear that this person is not mentally stable or within the statistical norm of what is considered normal in our society. Therefore, any attempt to politicize this incident is absurd. Despite attempts to associate this person with being a Trump supporter, we should not dismiss the evidence presented in this video. I strongly oppose such attempts and find them highly disturbing. I do not hold Bernie Sanders responsible when a supporter of his commits a violent act against Congress members during a baseball game. I do not blame Barack Obama when a supporter of Black Lives Matter commits a violent act against Dallas police officers. Similarly, I do not blame Donald Trump when someone who claims to be a fan of his commits a heinous act. However, in this particular case, there is no concrete evidence that suggests the person involved had strong political affiliations. It appears that the person had posts from both left and right perspectives. But ultimately, their political leanings are irrelevant. The crucial point to acknowledge is that this person is mentally unstable. Here is an actual video of the person exhibiting erratic behavior, reaching into a bag for a gun, and simulating a mass shooting at a school while mimicking Joker's laughter. They even simulate getting shot by the police. It is deeply unsettling. If you cannot see the person standing in a classroom, dropping what appears to be bullets on the floor, and positioned in front of an American flag, then it's important to recognize that this is genuinely disturbing. This individual is mentally ill and seeks attention. The media will inadvertently provide him with the attention he desires. They will repeatedly mention his name and plaster his face everywhere. 
catering to the desires of a disturbed individual. Let me reiterate, this person is mentally ill. It is evident to anyone who observes their actions. To pretend otherwise would be utterly absurd. There are undoubtedly numerous red flags in this case. If we want to discuss bipartisan failure, we must question why those around this person did not report their concerns. It is now known that the police were aware of this individual. This person had a career as a rapper, and their recent music videos depicted mass murder. In their most recent video posted on YouTube, they portrayed themselves in the aftermath of a school shooting, concluding with them draping an American flag over themselves. Another music video featured a cartoon character wearing a shirt with the logo of their YouTube channel, holding a long gun and being shot by the police. This should not come as a surprise. When individuals like this commit evil and terrible acts, it often turns out that there were warning signs. Apparently, the father had described this person as having emotional issues. It was also reported that they would ride up and down the block on a motorized scooter, blaring loud music for attention. Furthermore, WGN has stated that this person was already known to the police. However, it is crucial to address the immediate jump to conclusions about this person being a Trump supporter. Supposedly, there is a video of them at a Trump rally, dressed in a Where's Waldo outfit. Is this person simply a troll or someone seeking attention? It appears so. This is what crazy individuals on the internet do. Yet, the entire left immediately labels them as a Trump supporter, using it as an opportunity to condemn both Trump and the right, ultimately blaming innocent Americans for the actions of a deranged individual. This is a clear symptom of a country breaking down when the initial response is to scapegoat fellow citizens. And as expected, this incident quickly devolves into a discussion about gun control for the left. Gun control allows them to shift the blame onto their neighbors for something they had no involvement in. They will assert that the NRA is responsible for mass shootings. Or that law-abiding citizens who own long guns are to blame for school shootings. Joe Biden wasted no time in releasing a statement calling for more gun control, as he always has a predetermined agenda on this issue. The statement reads, Jill and I are shocked by the senseless gun violence that has once again brought sorrow to an American community on this Independence Day. As always, we are grateful for the first responders and law enforcement at the scene. I recently signed significant bipartisan gun reform legislation into law, marking the first major reform in almost 30 years. These actions will undoubtedly save lives, but our work is far from over. I remain committed to combating the epidemic of gun violence. It is important to note that President Biden tends to release statements like this mainly when incidents involve a predominantly white population or when a white supremacist targets black individuals. Unfortunately, those seem to be the only times he addresses such issues. Meanwhile, Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker emphasizes the need to discuss gun control as he believes it is always the right time to address this matter. However, we must question why gun control is consistently the go-to solution, regardless of the circumstances. Pritzker expresses his anger and frustration at the traumatization of children and families, not just in Illinois, but throughout the nation. He believes that as a country, we should not allow this continuous cycle of violence to persist, especially when mass shootings have become an all too regular occurrence happening weekly. Some may argue that today or now is not the appropriate time to discuss guns. However, Pritzker firmly believes that there is no better day or time than the present to engage in this conversation. He asserts that it is essential to address the issue immediately, even while the pain and loss are fresh. Pritzker's statement highlights the urgency of the matter. It is worth mentioning that Illinois already has stringent gun control laws, and Chicago, in particular, has extensive regulations in place. Senator Tammy Duckworth, representing Illinois, echoes the call for action by advocating for the elimination of assault weapons. The sentiment expressed by President Biden, Governor Pritzker, and Senator Duckworth reflects their concerns and frustrations with the current state of gun violence. They believe it is crucial to take immediate measures and engage in meaningful discussions to address this pressing issue in our society. I was recently speaking with Senator Durbin, who is making every effort to come to Highland Park as quickly as possible. He also extends his condolences.